Today is nothing but the accumulation of past experiences. And so as we look around today, we think we see what we see, but we don't really know unless we look at history to know where attitudes come from, institutions come from, structures and relationships that we are embedded in today are all inheritances from the past. Gordon's past had him growing up in Piedmont, California, where he learned to appreciate Chinese culture at an early age. My father was an artist from China, and he came to the United States in the 40s, and I grew up in a household that had his artwork all around us, and books about art and Chinese culture and Chinese history. My mother was Chinese American, uh, but also very proud of her Chinese heritage and Chinese American heritage. I should also say that there was another influence, and that was from my uh, extended family. My uh, mother's sister was Alice Fong, Alice Fong Yu, and she and her husband were very instrumental in the establishment of the Chinese Historical Society. In 1966, Gordon began to study Asian American history at Princeton, where he also became an anti-war activist. Although his mother's family had been in this country for several generations, the anti-Asian sentiment during the war caused him to question his identity. When I was protesting the war in Vietnam and handing out leaflets, um, people would say stuff, go back home. Or something. What are you doing on all this stuff? And I had rocks thrown through my window. You know, um, and this was again, emphasizing the racial connection between myself as an Asian American, a Chinese American, and the war in Vietnam. I remember really well my mother, who was third generation California. She was very worried about my active activism and being involved in protests. A lot of oftentimes these broke out in violence or arrest. And she said, they're just gonna, she said, Americans are just gonna shoot you down. This is not our country. So this, this really stuck with me, that even someone who I thought was American in every way. She was quite clear that this was, we were different, and that I shouldn't forget that uh, for my own safety. After graduating from Princeton, Gordon got his PhD from Stanford. Since 2012, he's been the co-director of the Chinese Railroad Workers in North America Project. And I studied this on my own when I came to Stanford uh, as a student, as a graduate student, and as a professor, one of the first things I did, I went to the library to look for records about the Chinese railroad workers. I looked at Leland Stanford's papers, there's not very many of this left. Not a single document about the Chinese railroad workers. And then I learned through the years that no one everywhere, anywhere, had found a single letter from a Chinese railroad worker. But we do have things such as railroad company records. We are studying and collecting the payroll records of the Central Pacific Railroad, which lists names of railroad workers and labor contractors. So we can find, we've now found, when we began the project, we had a half dozen, 20 names of railroad workers. Now we have hundreds of names. It was the building of the Transcontinental Railroad that sparked the migration of Chinese to America. They were the largest labor force in the United States in the 1860s. Largest labor force alone, largest single ethnic labor force in American life of those years. And then they were so instrumental, essential to the completion of the rail line. During his research, Gordon has been amazed at the almost superhuman feats of the Chinese railroad workers. Samet Tunnel is the longest of the tunnels for the railroad line that go through the Sierras. And it took the Chinese two winters to get through the granite to make this tunnel. Granite is the hardest stone there is and they used iron chisels and hammers to begin to chip away the tunnel face. They were lucky if they made an inch a day progress. And this tunnel is something like a half mile long. The research project was originally going to end in 2015, but because of its importance, may go on indefinitely. Gordon says the role these Chinese railroad workers had in the building of America needs to be more fully recognized. The idea that Chinese in America have always been marginal, have been inconsequential to the mainstream of American life is so wrong. And recovering this essential history, essential for not just Chinese Americans, but essential for Western history, for California history, for railroad history, for the linking of the nation is critical.
for Americans of all backgrounds to understand, to appreciate the presence of Chinese in American life.